Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. We're going to uh, talk today about the upper air maps that uh, you see oftentimes on these live streams and what they mean. But specifically, we're going to talk about what is often referred to as the jet stream level. And that is the level that is 500 millibars. Now, what does that mean? That is the uh, level of the atmosphere that you go to uh, to if you had a barometer in your hand and you could move up the atmosphere uh, you want you you will go as high until you get to a pressure of 500 millibars on your little barometer that you're holding and then uh, you plot them on a map just like you plot a surface map which is one of the instructional videos we did earlier and you connect the dots and you get an idea of what the upper air flow is now uh, remember, when you see those the surface map, the pressures that are on the surface map are adjusted for sea level for every observation point. It assumes that the Earth has basically a flat surface. And this way, uh, it's an apples to apples comparison. If you think about it, uh, if, uh, for example, uh, Denver, which is uh, up a mile high, well, uh, that 5,000 feet above sea level basically puts them up at the what we call the 850 millibar level. So for them, the surface is the 850 millibar level. So when you see the maps that the, the surface maps that are drawn, uh, there are corrections done. Uh, there's a sea level correction done to every point, and that makes it as if we're all looking at things on on an even keel. So. Uh, this is what uh, the upper air map looks like after it's plotted. Each one of these lines, you'll see a number there. Five. If you look at the line near the bottom that runs uh, from the Baja Peninsula across into uh, South Texas and then kind of loops there uh, to the east uh, to uh, southern Georgia, northern Florida, there's a number there attached to it, 582. Add a zero to the end of it. And you come with come out with 5,820 meters. So what that is telling you is that at that particular point, you would have to go up 5,820 meters uh, in order to uh, achieve a pressure of 500 millibars. And that is what you're seeing in terms of the plot. So with an upper high, uh, which is warmer air, you go up to the, the height numbers are going to be higher. It, higher pressure, uh, higher heights, warmer air, uh, warmer air being less dense. The opposite for colder air, lower pressure, and you, you can see it here back through this trough. And if you look at the height line that is sitting across Wyoming, that uh, value there is 534. So that would translate into 5,340 meters. So you go to a much lower height to achieve a pressure on your little barometer that you're holding in your hand, you would have to go up 5,340 meters uh, to achieve a 500 millibar pressure in the trough. And if you're in northern Florida, to get that 500 millibar pressure here, uh, you're going to go to 5,888 meters. And uh, the, the thing about the upper air and the jet stream is that we can see how the upper winds are blowing. Basically, it's, it, it's giving us an idea of where our weather systems are coming from, where our air is coming from in the atmosphere. This is a U.S. view that I don't often use. The darker orange lines that you see here uh, are uh, jet streaks. If you look closely, there are wind barbs plotted here. And this, this is the GFS model uh, forecasting winds for that 500 millibar level. So we can actually see where these strong jet streaks occur. And oftentimes, that is going to be a company, uh, those jet streaks, uh, uh, knowing where they are can be very useful uh, with regards to where precipitation sets up. Uh, they can be useful, certainly, when we're monitoring the possibility, say, of the development of thunderstorms, uh, in the, uh, especially in the springtime and summertime months. But putting it in motion on, on the uh, GFS, so you can see how the trough that's out in the west, in this particular situation, and we've got the ridge here in the east, you can see how that trough just moves along. And notice how they both change. Always remember when, when dealing with the highs and lows, the thing that's most important is uh, the uh, flow. Counterclockwise around low pressure, 
clockwise around high pressure. The weather systems at this level sometimes are a little less defined. You uh, sometimes, but not always, have closed high pressure systems. For example, in the Gulf of Mexico, you can see a closed high pressure system there. So you've got clockwise winds around that 588 height. Up to the north, where you have lower pressures, colder air, uh, you've got some uh, closed low pressure systems. By closed, I mean they have the height lines go all the way around, all the way around them, so that you have a complete upper air circulation. There's one here sitting uh, in northern Labrador. There's another one that's off the coast here of the Pacific Northwest. So you follow the jet stream, the wind barbs. They'll tell you uh, the direction of the winds in that particular part of the geography you're looking at. Westerly winds. Uh, across uh, Mexico, for example, and then you've got southwesterly winds. Uh, in, in this particular example, you have southwesterly winds that are blowing uh, throughout uh, the eastern part of the United States. So in this type of upper air, you would see the ridge that's in the east, for example, and the trough more in the west. So you can make a sort of general uh, uh, statement about this, that the uh, the winds, uh, the warmer air, warmer air in the east, colder air in the west. And over time, you can watch how these um, upper lows and highs rotate and move and change in strength. I have often described this, uh, the upper air and the atmosphere as how, and how it works, as the old um, uh, toddler gearbox puzzle toy. If you remember, you, it was a... Um, a, a, a series of gears and a child would put them in the box in the proper place. The gears would come together. One of them would have a handle. And when you turned one gear, you would turn all the other gears. That really is how the upper atmosphere works. The only difference is if you watch the gears, okay, these closed upper lows and highs, and you move them over time, they change. They change in position, they change in magnitude, they change in strength. Sometimes they get stronger, sometimes they get weaker. And that is the real challenge in terms of forecasting is trying to anticipate not only the change, but the fact that the change itself is, is changing. So this is just a brief overview of, of the upper levels of the atmosphere. If you're a regular watcher on my YouTube channel, I usually put... Uh, the map up this way uh, where you don't see the wind barbs uh, you but it's the same map it's just that without the wind barbs and the bluer and brown uh, areas indicate where the heights are higher than average or colder than average so lower than average so when they're lower uh, you've got these deep troughs the so darker the blue the the uh, the, the, the deeper that trough is, the more intense that trough is. And the same goes for the upper high areas in the orange and brown. The uh, darker those colors are, the stronger the upper highs are. So I hope that clarifies at least uh, what uh, the upper atmosphere is when we talk about the jet stream and the maps that we use. If you have any additional questions uh, regarding this, uh, please feel free to uh, just leave something in the comments section, and I will be um, more than uh, happy uh, to respond to you. Uh, just just leave them right there. Uh, if you are really into weather, you might want to consider joining my weather platform on Patreon. It's just $2 a month to start, uh, unless you've got uh, a, a, a lot of weather enthusiasm. I've got a couple of higher tiers there, but $2 gets you uh, most of the coverage. And uh, we uh, do a lot of things on that uh, Patreon platform, including extra live streams just for Patreon members and uh, messaging. You can message me at any time, and I usually try to get back with a, a timely response. And uh, we do other instructional uh, things along the way. We'll get your own hand in, uh, involved in the forecasting process. Uh, otherwise, you can also download my free weather app on Google Play or on the uh, the App Store. Uh, just search Meteorologist Joe Chaffee and join me every day for my live streams. We usually do them at 7 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. And sometimes I also have uh, the uh, taped version of, my, of the Joe and Joe Weather Show with my colleague Joe Rayo. Thanks for uh, being here. More instructional videos to follow. We'll take a look at them as uh, you get well-versed on the world of weather.